and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Knee Bob. bursitis, stretches and exercises. We're also going to kind of go over whether or not we think you have it. We'll kind of show you a little ways to tell. Sure. You know, little, little way to diagnose at home. Yeah, we're going to talk about the four main bursitis that you could have in your knee. There's pes anserine. That's a big one. That's a big one. Supra patella, pre patella, and infra patella. Wow. Really not that hard to, to show here. Well, uh, we're going to show them on my knee here. So if, if you got to put up with that, Brad. Well, let's just see what happens. All right. <laughs> By the way, before I go any further, now that I got my knee out, um, if you are new to our channel, please take a second mm -hmm. to subscribe to us. We provide videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Also, if you get a chance, go over to Facebook and like us because Brad and I, as children, we're not liked. It's really quite sad, and now we're trying to turn right. everything around. It's all coming back now. It's, it's, it's getting better, right, It goes around. No, that's not the way. That's not the word. It doesn't come around. But <laughs> All right, let's show what the, the where the bursa is. At. Well, first, what is a bursa, Brad? Yeah, that's a big thing yeah. because you hear the term bursitis, and people, I think, get overexcited about yeah, it. Yeah, and some people actually say, I got bursa in my knee. Yeah. It's like, no, everybody's got a bursa in their knee. It's bursitis that you're right. worried about. So You've got bursas all over your body, that's around right. the joints. They're so, yeah, they're fluid-filled sac. Mm -hmm. So it, this might be somewhat of a representation of it. Um, and, and it's between the bone and the soft tissues. So it helps act shock absorbers, or it helps the, you know, like tendons glide over the right. bone. It just makes everything work really well. If you think like of a tendon going over a bone, and the tenon was rubbing over a bone after a long time, it would wear out. Right. And like, a, would... like a rope getting frayed going over the edge of a, you know, edge of a piece of wood where you put the burst on there and you got some lubricant and then it goes lovely and it lasts for a whole lifetime as long as it doesn't get irritated. Right. And that, that actually brings you to one of the reasons why it might hurt is because if you have overuse, um, like they call jumper's knee. Right. Um, and you jump, 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 and you, uh, you know, after a while the, the bursa gets irritated. Right. Uh, but, yeah. I, I like the example you brought up before we were talking, like someone who uh, works putting flooring in, carpet layer, that kind of thing, where they're on their knees all the time working on those. Yeah, we'll talk about that, Brad. Okay. But let's show where they're at first. Okay, so we got four of them. So. Supra means above. Sure. So patella is the kneecap. Supra is above. So you got one right here. I don't think it's that big. Um, and then you got one pre-patella. That's pre. right in front of the patella. Sure. So it's right on the kneecap itself. I hope this is going to be hard to get off. Don't worry about it, Bob. <laughs> you can just pull your pant leg over. All right. Then there's infra-patella. So that, that's one right below the knee. Sure. Infra meaning below. And then you have pes anserine, and that's right in here. Did you look up where that word comes from? Yes, it does. It means goose foot. Goose foot? Yeah, pes. pes. I, I knew that for a long time. Oh, right? you did. So there's three muscles that come together here, Brad. One, two, three, and they form like a goose foot. Yeah, you are an artist, Bob. Sart it Sart looks like a goose foot. Sartorius, semitendinosus, and gracilis. He's done so, his homework. Yeah, I've done my homework. So here are the three, uh, the four bursts that can, ha you mm -hmm. know, can, can give you trouble. And um, one possibility is that just trauma. So like if you were doing a sporting event, you landed hard on your knee, yep. um, it, it, you might go ahead and inflame that bursa itself. I think I did that to my knee in wrestling once. Well, that, that's the other one. Is it an occupational thing? And that's what you alluded to before, Brad. Mm -hmm. um, if you're, they call it clergyman's knee, uh, you know, a, a priest may, right. may kneel a lot. Yeah, probably a Catholic because they do a lot of right, kneeling. Right, we do a lot sure. of kneeling, yep. And then uh, also, um, uh, I've heard it called housemaid's knee. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, if you, you're a wrestler, sure, um, it certainly could happen that way. I knew a therapist that got this because we did a lot of work with patients on mats. Yep. And yep. he'd be kneeling a lot. Um, if you lay tile or if you lay... Uh, Carpet, right? All, all those things make sense, don't they? That right. They You're down on your on your knees, working them and over and over. Yeah. And then, like we said, uh, if you get an overuse injury where, like, you're constantly using this tendon, like with the jumper's knee, mm -hmm. um, you can inflame the the bursa along with it. Right. I would think if you had to go up and down steps a lot, yeah, that may be a good uh, sort that of. That might irritation. be an indicator. Yeah. 
Now, there's also a chance, a lesser chance, uh, that you have an infection in the knee. Uh -huh. um, now, that would you, you generally would have to break through the skin somehow to get it into the bursa. Sure. Now, you were mentioning, Brad Howard, though, if you had a knee replacement and you were starting to get some redness like this, you definitely need to see the doctor for right. that because... Yeah, when you get uh, parts from your knee that, you know, artificial parts. Foreign parts introduced into they, your knee. They attract they infections. Attract. They do. And you don't even have to cut through the skin. It can, like dental work, you know, you can get an infection in your re knee replacement. So, Happened you know, to you, my mother-in-law. Yeah. So, so if you've got redness around that knee and you have a replaced. And warmth. And warmth yeah. and you have a, a replaced knee, even a few years ago and all been going good. You better see a doctor and get so, it checked. So uh, to, to tell whether or not you have bursa, a lot of times it, bursitis, it's just a real, are you tender here, sure. here, here, or here? Mm -hmm. I mean, especially here. This is a common one because I'm off the knee joint. I'm yep. down below here. Yep. Yep. That's quite often pes anserina, uh, bursitis. So what do you do? You can do ice. There you, you ice go. Pack. You put, put ice pack on there. You can use an anti-inflammatory. So ibuprofen, something of that nature. Right. If you um, um, have an infection, obviously you can do an antibiotic. Um, if it gets bad and you know it's really swollen up, they might stick a needle in there and take some of that fluid out of there. Yep. Drain that. If it gets really bad, they sometimes do surgery and actually mm, take the bursa out. Sure. But we're going to show you stretches today, stretches and strengthening that help the knee generally with bursitis. So let's get started with that. Okay Brad. then. The first one is um, the the calf, believe it or not, goes all the way up into the knee. And so it's always good to stretch that. I'm going to show one way to do it. You can take a towel or um, some people take a dog leash. We got the yoga strap here, sure. which we'll list down below in our products right. uh, section of Amazon. But you can go ahead. I always like to put it right where the tag is here. And you can hook through the loops here real nicely. And you can just pull toward you here and there you get you a go. nice good calf yep. stretch. Getting a nice stretch. Like Bob said, the, the calf muscle uh, goes all the way up, actually crosses over the knee. Yep. Okay. Um, Do you want to show on, on your board there, Brad? Right. If you have it, I personally really am a big fan of the incline board for stretching. Can you get down? Yeah, I was going to say, Lonnie's going to have to yeah, and get stretch down. like this, and you can relax and put all your weight on that leg, straighten the knee out, and you can get a nice stretch. And it's very easy and easy to relax. Um, if this, you're a runner, especially, and you stretch every day like yeah. that, that's a great one to have. Runner, even if you're a walker, one way or another, um, and make sure you get the right angle. Around 20, 25 degrees, I, I find that most people is, is the best angle. You put one below in the product yeah, section. Yeah, and our favorite product was... A, the, but got a Brad nice made one. this one. Yeah. And he I, made me one. Yeah, so. and, and I made about a dozen of them what over a nice the last guy. years. All right, then we're going to go right into a hamstring stretch, Brad. So same thing, we can do it with a towel there or a go. belt. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up. What I like about this, Brad, is I can, I got the loops here. I can actually push down right here, yeah. and then relax, push down and then relax. And, and the knee being straight is critical. If you bend the knee, it takes the hamstring out of it. You don't get as effective as a stretch. Yeah, and I do this one every morning. Did it this morning already, Brad. You did. I'm, I'm nice quite dedicated. Work. All right, next one is the quad stretch, Brad. Now you can do this one without the band or with the band. A very easy way to do it is just lay on your side and you just grab onto the ankle like this right. and pull it back. Now, if, if you're way up like this, you're not getting a quad stretch. you got to pull it way back like right. this. So if you look down and you can see your knee out in front of your stomach, it's too far back. you got to yep. pull it behind it and you'll feel that stretch when you do that. Now, you can do it with the band. I mean, you can, you can hook it up and, you know, get... Put it around your foot. It's a little more complicated. And then lay on your stomach and, and yep, and you can pull like this. I, I like doing this one. I like it on my stomach better actually. Yeah, really? Yeah, I'm more relaxed. You got some pretty good leverage there. And you know, it, laying flat forces you to have good mechanics in your hip. All right, next one is hip adductors, Brad. And this Ooh. is especially important for Pez anserine. Yeah, the Pez anserinus yeah, I, or anserine. So you basically you're gonna sit like this. What are they, frog leg they call this? Yeah, the clamshell. Yeah. Yeah, everyone has their own. And you can use your elbows here, Brad, and push down sure. like this yeah. and lean forward. Ooh, I really feel that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't do this one that much myself, but I'll have patients do it that need some hip uh, stretching as, as well as uh, adductors. I do it laying down flat on my back, and I probably should do it this way because I can feel it. it is stretching more, than, A bit more than, it, yeah. than it did, yeah. All right. Um, 
I think that's it for the stretches, Brad. Now we're going to go ahead and show strengthening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show those? Sure. Uh, we'll do a straight leg raise to start off with. Yep. I'll get you a pillow. Oh, thanks, Bob. People get tired of hearing me talk, so I thought, let's do talk. Yes, yeah, so of course. You can need a break. I do, too. <laughs> okay, so, so straight leg raise. Yep. So this is working the quadriceps, and this is harder than it looks if you do it properly. So I, this leg is just supporting. It's best to have the opposite leg up in this position. And I'm gonna come up to here and go back down, but not rest it. I'm gonna go about two or three inches from the floor or the table and come back up. And if you wanna get more aggressive, you can start doing, uh, it'd be like a plyometric, and you can definitely feel those quads working. Again, the knee's gonna stay straight while you're doing this. If you do this for 20 to 30 reps, you're gonna to need to rest it. Yeah. I can guarantee you. Why don't you do a hip abductor, Brad? Okay. Just go right around the circle here. I don't now, know if you wanna do it that way. I'm gonna do it, well, I'll pull my mic off. All right. So the bottom leg is gonna be bent. This one's gonna be straight. And we're not gonna bring the leg out here. It's gonna be straight in line. And yeah. I'm gonna work. The toes pointed straight forward. Yeah. This, is, this is what most people like to do because your body normally yeah. takes the easy way out and that's a lot easier than this. Doing the hip abduction, but that's hip you, abductor. Yep. And you're gonna feel this right up here. Those hips are gonna be working nicely and into that uh, IT band, strengthening that across the knee. Next one, Bob. Well, you can do hip adduction too. Oh, you can yeah. go and lift this yep. one up. So we're switching from leg to leg here. Now we're strengthening this leg. We were strengthening this right. leg. So we're doing the outside, now we're doing that groin muscle, that inside adductor. And again, that's the muscles that come into that pes anserine yep. bursitis, so um, we can strengthen those muscles. Yep, that's that goose foot again, huh, Bob? Yep, the pes, goose foot. Pes Just ans. like that, yep. three. Is that, uh, is that a Latin term? Well, I, that I'm not sure, Brad. Okay, usually it is with I'll medical do, terminology. Call up one of your Latin friends and let me know. <laughs> All right, hip extension. Well, while you're in this position, why don't you do uh, clamshells? Okay. Supine? No. Clamshell. Yeah, it is clamshell, ah, yeah. I like the clam going yeah. through the ocean. And this is going to work that hip, where the posterior fibers of that hip adductor. You remember that Elvis movie, Clam Bake? <laughs> Never got it. Go ahead. That was a long time ago, yeah, That Bob. was a long time ago. I'm really dating myself <laughs> down on that one. And again, 10 to 15 repetitions of all of these is typically a good number. I'm feeling that work right now, right there. Can I take a break, Bob? I think that's actually enough, Brad. That's probably enough exercise. The only other thing, yeah, when you take a break, when you're sleeping, Brad, get back in the position. Oh, yeah, assume the position. Say, especially if you have pes anserina, yep. bursitis, and you're sleeping on your side, you want to take pressure off that bursa by oh. putting a pillow between your legs. Right. And for me, I, I, I personally, do a double yeah, up like I like that. a double up, yeah. So, all right. Uh. Thanks, everybody, Are for we watching. Done? We're done. Okay, take care.